So guys, here we are. We're just uh, leaving the weekend behind us. I think that was game week 343 or something. We had the first kind of iteration of all the main drafts across Champion Europe. Me, Alex and Harry, we jumped on live last Wednesday and put together the, the heavyweight 40 pointers that were really making all the waves across all the leaderboards, even though we didn't all necessarily pick them in our teams for ourselves. Alex did very well, but in France, I uh, know already. And, you know, we're here to have a look at the game weeks that we're leaving behind, any of the telltale signs of the form, the players, whatever, from last weekend that we need to know about coming into the weekend ahead. But as we've come up to record, uh, I'm joined again by Alex and we've got Jer Jeremy McGann joining us as well. We are still in the aftershock, still in the aftermath of the, the when Prem becoming now Prem and the Prem is now here. So, guys, first of all, thanks for joining us. And yeah, how you been? How exciting has your day been? Jeremy? Yeah, pr pretty good. I, I, I'm waking up, obviously, in Australia uh, and, and waking up to seeing that the Prem was finally announced and, and what a great video it was. I mean, I didn't mean to, but I woke up my son just watching the video and, and not getting the sound of it because uh, I thought it was a, a, gr a great announcement. Um, I, I'm, it's amazing that it's coming in. I'm already using the prices. I was looking at the, the marketplace just before we, uh, just before we tuned in. Uh, let's let's see how it goes, but it's obviously amazing for Sora that they were able to uh, to finally onboard the the EPL. Yeah, for me it was it's a great day, isn't it? Like always, always proud of Sora when they smash someone out. Even like the little things, you know, cameo from Nellis, and you know the card reveals just looking so much better. Like everyone, I think expected them to just be the the normal template, but to have these special edition cards. And no errors, no hiccups from what I've seen. Loving it. Fair play to so rare. And today is a good day. It's been absolutely buzzing, isn't it? So all, there was no Premier League fixtures at the weekend. Uh, so there was nothing really to, to kind of to pick up from, as it were. There was some definitely some interesting cup, you know, things that happened. But, uh, you know, no Premier League to kind of look back at. But coming into the weekend, we do have teams to build. And we do have, you know, some fixtures to look at for the Premier League itself. Now, we're not going to be dissecting everything and doing a full preview for, you know, the weekend. You know, because we're at the very beginning of the week. This is Monday as we record it, you know. Um, but... As we open the draft, there's definitely some heavy hitters and some big shakers in the draft that definitely, uh, you know, the three of us have been gravitating towards and, and been pulling out. Um, in terms of forward players, elf, uh, you know, I think when it comes to forwards, there's a lot of option in the Premier League for guys under the kind of 48, 45 kind of price points. For you guys, when you've been going through the draft, has there anyone been around that, that kind of budget value that's caught your eye? Yeah, I found um, straight out of the bat, um, Eddie and Ket is obviously starting for Arsenal. He's starting really strong. That's just an instant pickup for me. Um, and then in defence, a more risky 40 pointer, uh, Joel Matip of Liverpool. Yes, Liverpool are awful. Yes, he's a bit rotational. But, you know, I think for 40 points, you're just looking for someone that plays really. And if they play good, even better. Um, it just kind of facilitates your draft at that point. So, yeah, good players for me. Yeah, I've seen up uh, front, um, they're playing Crystal Palace this weekend, United, and Anthony is at 40. Um, so I'm thinking, you know, if somebody wants a, a backup, it would be because most people might jump on a on a Haaland or or Rashford. Uh, and, and in defense, uh, it's 46, but um, William Saliba is only at 46. They are going to Everton on the on the weekend. Arsenal, uh, yeah, the two players that when I looked at it, um, kind of jumped at me. They're going to have a new manager bounce then for Everton. Otherwise, you would expect a steamroll from Arsenal. But I like Saliba at that price, to be honest. Like, he is really strong as a, as a so rare asset. So, yeah, we'll see how he does. Yeah. Interesting, Dunny, he's picked out a midfielder. You know, when I was going through midfield, like, when you do get, you know, below the guys that score 50, it's quite slim pickings. You know, like, in midfield, you know, how, how did you go out uh, in midfield? To, who did you go for yourselves? To be honest, I haven't had like the longest look at it. So I'm just looking now and I'm looking at someone like Bruno Gamares up against uh, West uh, West Ham. Yeah, just love that as a, as a player. He's been a bit, you know, let's say average recently um, in terms of the SO5 output, but, you know, an outstanding player that I expect to pick up his form. Um, Perisic, we'll have to see how he plays as a midfielder. Obviously on FPL, if any of you guys are coming over from that, he's a, he's a defender. So interesting mix up. And yeah, it's good that you can play like compared to FPL, you can bring in some centre defensive mids, looking at someone like Thomas Partey could always be strong. Onana from Everton, you know, for my defensive mids, you want to put them up against good opposition unless you're picking like someone like Rodri, that's an absolute monster, Rolls Royce at 68 points. But because he's always on possession, because he, because he's always making strong uh, passes through the midfield, he's going to pick you just guaranteed points every week. So no one that really stands out. 
I've gone for Kevin De Bruyne. It's Kevin De Bruyne. Not not much more needs to be said. I think most of the people will. I've I've spent because I spent a bit in the in the striker position uh, and in the keeper for the midfield. I try and find a midway, and uh, there's Christian Norgard at 51, and they are playing Southampton on the weekend. Uh, Brentford, uh, and then there's obviously Mitoma, and he's only at 54, and they're playing Bournemouth on the weekend, Brighton. So I was I was looking for like not you know not other guard and De Bruyne, but trying to uh, to find two players in the middle. Uh, I thought it worked all right. Yeah, that's Would something I'd love to get yeah, everyone's everyone's opinion on actually is Mitoma because I'm a bit cautious. You know, he's on absolute fire. I know how good he is, but I do feel maybe a bit of overhypes coming into there. You know. I'm not considering him at 54 personally, but I could understand completely why people are. Um, 54, you know, deal or no deal for you guys? Value, no value? What do you think? I think it's, I think he has good value at that price point. Because I think like the way form tends to go in the Premier League, and particularly the kind of form he's on, is like he's going to be on that now until they stop playing football for any reason. You know, he gets injured, suspended. There's a big break in fixtures for any reason. You know, like it's a real tempo thing with guys like him that are really quick and really intelligent, and it's, you just need to keep playing them until they until they kind of burn out in that sense. You know, but Haaland is 57, so you know. If you're in that kind of ballpark anyway, you know, like that's is where I kind of struggle. I went Haaland and Ketia as my forwards, and I spent all my budget in midfield. I went De Bruyne and Saka, two sixty plusers. Um, so I, I really struggled to find. You know, I thought in Ketia, same as you. Uh, I thought in Ketia at forty points was an absolute snip, no problem at all. Um, but midfield, I really struggled to look at anyone beyond Saka and De Bruyne and Rodri as well. But you know, you're limited to two players per team. And taking Haaland up front, you're then kind of tied elsewhere. Um, I just found it really difficult to be confident in a lot of these guys, you know. But uh, a wee guy that we've not mentioned in the midfield that we'll probably uh, mention just before we leave midfield, but uh, is James Ward-Prowse. He's like 59 points or something. He's not that bad, you know. Like, uh, And, you know, anyone who knows anything about football knows that James Ward-Prowse takes every set piece that Southampton have ever won in the history of that club. And he's eternal it seems he's always at the, he's always there doing his thing and that's just the way it is whether the bottom of the table or top he's getting good AA points he's always capable for decisives from corners and the like you know and uh, sometimes you you know because you are limited to two per team it's good to know you know pair some of these smaller teams word price is very obvious but some of these smaller teams have a designated penalty taker have a designated set piece taker you know and these details are always fun as well Um in defence, I know he's kind of mentioned a few bargain basement guys, but who who was the big hitters that he's took in defence in? Uh, Jeremy, do you want to go first? Yeah, I got I got Saliba and uh, and I got Lisandro Martinez because he had a, a couple of good games with with United and uh, and yeah, same thing. Um, they're facing Crystal Palace, as I said, yeah, uh, and he's at forty six only. So so I thought it was a a good get and and what. Good game against Arsenal, despite the the result and sixty six before against Crystal Palace already. So, uh, hopefully, he keeps a starting and be a good scores. Nice. I'm going to need a little bit of work on mine. Uh, double Liverpool, which is just it's just suspect, isn't it? But I just couldn't turn down Trent. Like, I I think I'm stuck in this wonderland of what Trent was like when Liverpool were good. And if you don't know, just look at like a, a hundred, and that's pretty much it. He's just he just smashed in massive scores. Um, so I find it hard to give him up at 57 points against Wolves away. And then I'm like, you own Trenton Limited. He didn't even start the last game. He got replaced, I think, by Milner in the cup game this week. So it's just like, yeah, suspect at best. A little bit of work needed, let's say. Do you see that Trippier <laughs> cost <laughs> 75? 75, yeah. <laughs> Trippier is like the messy. The most expensive player. Time. Yeah. And, and you can see why, like his his last average has been huge. But for me, I'm not touching Trip here at 75. To be honest, even even though I know how good he is, for sure. Um, well, in defence, I'd spent all my points in midfield, as as I mentioned. So I went for at 41 points. Pervis is stupian, the the fullback at Brighton. He's quite fullbacky, you know, peak or bust. But he's got decent AA. I don't think he gives away possession too often. Um, so he does get 55s and stuff. You know, can get. Those kind of scores on occasion. And I went with Mark Guy. I'm not sure if I can say that name properly. At 50 points, I kind of struggled to find another defender that was is kind of nailed on to play. 
And like again, we're kind of mentioning some of these mid-table teams. There's some good options in them, you know. But I am nervous that both those guys are not could have a game week where one of them or both of them aren't a good option. Because coming into this week, I'm looking at Brighton at home at Bournemouth, and I think that's cool. No problem. If Stupian can go in, but Guy is away to Man United, so if, if Stupian didn't have a good fixture, you know, it, it, they're they're both quite sensitive to that. It's probably what I'm getting at here. Um, but I'm you know I'm playing with fire, and I'm happy to do so. Um, <laughs> And goals, I went for Bazunu at 40 points, under 23. I'd just like to have that as a common. And Emmy Martinez at 47, just because, again, I had no points left over and he was probably the best one I could get. Anyone grab you and goalkeeper as a good 40-pointer? I just want to shout out Emmy Martinez. Do love him after his World Cup heroics. Um, love or hate type of guy. Love him. Uh, Robert Sanchez from Brighton, really solid goalkeeper for 42. And Jose, Star- Jose Saar starting for... Um, Wolves at forty, like no brainer in in goalkeeper for me. If you're looking to go looking for the budget options, those are the two you should go for, in my opinion. Yeah, he's he's not been great, but he'll be busy. Hugo Lloris is only at forty one. I mean, he's playing City on the weekend, um, so he'll be busy. And if he's lucky, he's in a great day and he'll score an outstanding score. Um, I would agree but... with that. I'm I'm actually slightly scared he gets dropped just because of how many mistakes he's made recently. And, and obviously, being a Celtic fan, I am biased towards like a Foster <laughs> or, or someone like that. But yeah, it's probably not likely. But yeah, I'll avoid him for now. You should avoid him. I took I took Ramsdale and Edison. Like I bolstered my um, nice little little keeper and make sure I had the choice. But yeah, Ramsdale and and Saliba end up being my defensive pair for the weekend going on to Everton. So hopefully, I love they, they that. do yeah. well. I might I would have copied and pasted that if yeah I'll think about that <laughs> awesome um, I think when I looked at, when it came at defence when I was scratching around for those 40 pointers the one that's kind of made headlines today the, it looked like to be one of the best value picks was Jao Cancelo at 40 points but um, maybe about three hours after this was opened he's moved on loan to Bayern Munich who Alex you were saying they desperately need a, a player like Cancelo in there after the weekend yeah, I think it's important to note for everyone watching, this isn't just a Premier League draft. This is like a series we plan on doing um, every week on Champion Europe and, you know, some of the, you know, standout points for us. So Cancelo is the big one for me. I watched the game at the weekend and Bayern were pretty lackluster all round for Bayern. Um, you know, attack, midfield, defence. There was, there was no one that really stood out, to be honest to me. But obviously, right back is their weakest part. I think I think there's been a fallout between Pavard and the manager. So a right back like Cancelo, uh, to be honest, I actually put like a, £1,500 bid in for him, his one of 100 rare. And I got out bid. He, he ended up going for about £1,800. And if, if you think like Theo Hernandez of AC Milan, you can get for 750 at the moment to pay double for Cancelo. I was willing to do it. <laughs> like I did get caught up in the hype. But um, I just think if, if he's playing a final, right, he's playing so right far. Back. Yeah, he's playing right wing like let's be honest they're just so far up the box and just passes will get you so many points decisives you'll get so many points like i can just see him feeding cheapo Mo- cheapo motang or whoever they put up front um yeah not a must have he's definitely on the expensive side and in terms of so rare i know it's not po- i know it's not probably favorite but if he moves to buying which he has and they don't get a picture of him in a buying kit imagine six cancelos for the whole rest of the season you would just dominate because of your like differentials. And it's not something we talk about a lot in So Rare, but I would absolutely love it. Uh, we can't get too caught up in it because obviously probably won't happen. They'll probably get a buying per kick pretty soon if he's selling for like £1,500 and that's 100 of them. So they'll keep pumping those out to make a bit of money and, and fair play to them. But I love Cancelo as an option. You know, buying defenders, sorry, I've, I've stayed in this talk for a while, but buying defenders, if you don't know So Rare, they rack up so many points, even when losing. It, it's actually perfect if they get, you know, one goal down early on because the other team just sits back in their half, camps in the penalty box and buy and just pass it side to side, side to side to side until they get a chance, very much like Man City. Um, but what that does on so rare is get you like deep passes into the final third and those are just easy points for defenders. So Upa Meccano, Delict, um, now Cancelo. I love it. Love it how, was, how was the game itself, Bayern against uh, Frankfurt? Like you said, you said to watch it, yeah, was it 1-1? To be honest, um, it, it finished 1-1 if anyone didn't watch it. Um, and, and Frankfurt, I should have probably spoke about more. Like Randall Kolo Mwani is an absolute monster of a player. I used to own him like back in, back in his Nantes days and... Now I'm starting to regret letting him up. You saw what he did in the World Cup. Unlucky not to win it all for France. 
but that hasn't downed his confidence at all. I think it was him that grabbed the goal, if I remember right, but don't quote me on that. But yeah, Frankfurt were just very solid as, as a unit, really. Like no one really stood out besides him for me. But yeah, really impressed with them. If, if they had a nice fixture fixture list coming up, I'd consider picking up a few of those. I know Muwani's on, on the strong side in terms of value, but um, yeah, definitely consider it. I'm, I'm trying to pull up the fixtures now if you guys want to um, have any other games that you watched at the weekend. Oh. Well, I was going to say is another transfer that's happened today as well is old hero, old favourite to many a football fan around the world. Philip Max has rejoined the Bundesliga. He has signed for Frankfurt to be their left back. So what do you think, Alex, if you put a big attacking left back in that team, would Frankfurt have been any better at the weekend? Um, yeah, I think it would have helped. I mean, they're playing her for Berlin in the next game. So I think, nice. yeah, it would be... Why? Score if, you, more. If, you, if you're new to so rare and you want a, a budget champion Europe stack, try and look at a Frankfurt team. Let me try and pull up some of the names. So, I mean, you're not really looking at budget with Muwani, but you still kind of want him. Um, Luca Pellegrini was playing like attacking left mid, wing, um, left, left wing back, um, left mid. And yeah, didn't have a great game at all. So yeah, I think if you slot in someone there, be an absolute monster. I was I was impressed with Goethe as well. I absolutely love Goethe. He's still do, doing it. And uh, Kamada was actually the one that got the other goal. And oh, I'm looking at the wrong fixture. <laughs> but uh, yeah, pretty uh, pretty solid performance all round for them. With uh, yeah, with I think Frankfurt with Kolmani, even if like the price is hard to digest, but at least for the Bundesliga draft for anybody who's watching, like it could be a good get for the weekend. Um, because they're playing Yatha Berlin and because he just that he just can't stop scoring. And it might be probably the only real like strong outlet. Like I like Lindstrom, but um but Moani is the one at the end of every single um opportunity. Is is there any other game since we're on the Bundesliga? Is there any game that caught your eyes on the on the weekend in, in, in Germany? I watched uh, Leverkusen v Dortmund, which was not quite as good as you maybe thought it would have been. Leverkusen were really impressive in spells. Like, Xabi Alonso has got a really good kind of tune coming out of them now, but it was kind of it was kind of typical Leverkusen. They just couldn't finish their dinner. You know, they just didn't really get enough chances in the box, and the couple of chances they did get it didn't really make the most of them. Um, Dortmund, like, overall, you'd probably say were deserved winners um, on the day, but you know, Leverkusen definitely should have scored in that game. No two ways about it. You know, they had enough opportunity, they had enough pace, they had enough kind of determination for it. And um, Jeremy Frimpong, I don't know if he's been credited for it, but he got a goal line clearance, like a proper, like one inch off the goal line, kicked the ball away, like was a goal. He stopped it. And uh, a great game he had, like great game he had. Like, and I know I'm very <clears throat> much of a, Frimp a Frimpong fanboy, but... You take away the goals conceded off of his score at the weekend. Like he was, he was, yeah, he he had a very good game. That's very weird because he, he hasn't been granted that. I didn't see it, um, but obviously trust you, Quinny. And he's got twenty eight AA for that game, and that is just not for Pong like at all, especially against hard opposition. So yeah, he must have had a, a storming game. It was brilliant, it was, man. Honestly, it was Alors first first game starting with Dortmund, right? Yeah. Uh, Modest came off the bench as well, and uh, uh, Bino Gittens came off the bench. Adiemi's goal was really nice as well. A like, uh, nice finish from Adiemi, played it back across the goalkeeper. Good play from Julian Brandt. Um, Marco Royce made his return in, as well off the bench, so he's back in town. He'll be a great um, for capped modes because he hasn't been playing, I suspect. And if he's come off I'm, the bench and didn't score, yeah, look yeah. forward to Royce. Um, Schlotterbeck looked great yeah the whole Dortmund team like the goalkeeper really impressed me as well Koble that's probably the best game I've seen him play he looked really good so you said um, Leverkusen were quite impressive because they've got they've got Augsburg next game so my boy Wurtz might be putting up some scores hopefully anyone else yeah well Wurtz, Wurtz definitely played well he was probably the best, one of the best players in the team and he gets subbed off about 60 or 70 obviously we all know he's just coming back from a long term injury they were losing you know, it was one of those ones. So I think he'll be in good form and fit to start. He was quite unlucky with, uh, I don't know if I can't remember if it was a shot or a free kick or something, but he definitely had an opportunity to influence the game and it didn't quite happen. So yeah, against Augsburg could be a good game for them. And I say like, they just look like they're playing well. They're playing in midfield, Andrik and Palacios and Amiri. Um, and then on the wide areas, they had uh, Bailey and Adley. And then Wurtz was playing centre forward, basically, with a bit of a free roll to do whatever he wanted. I like that. Um, which was good fun to watch. Yeah, so they were building up really well. And then 
And Chappie was left back, but kind of tucking in. And Frimpong just had the whole right side of the pitch to do with whatever he wanted between him and Diaby. Wurtz would come over to hang out. Amiri would come over to hang out. And uh, yeah, it was really, they were really good. And I say for like 20 minutes in the first half and 20 minutes in the second half, they should have beat Dortmund, you know, and they didn't, you know. Yeah. Um, so yeah, good game. Uh, but this, it was quite, I'm making it sound interesting, right? I like to think I am anyway, but it was not fun to watch for the most part. It was quite, a, outside of those 20 minutes, like Dortmund scored sucker punches and stuff like that, you know, and there just wasn't, the rest of the game was quite naff. There wasn't much going on, you know, so um, it wasn't a spectacle. Yeah. Should we, um, and let, Jeremy, you got any other games to say? Otherwise we can move on to the French League where we've got an expert in the house or... <laughs> oh, I mean, I, I think I, I was trying to look for Wolfsburg. I mean, I'm sure you guys have seen like how many goals they had scored sure. in the week. Uh, but this weekend they've they've lost uh, two one um, to, to full crook. So I just kind of try and cut it, and then so that they were not um, playing well. I was going to like talk about Van der Ven and how great he's been, and he's had a shocker on the, on the weekend. Uh, but also, I wanted to warn anybody who was into the Wolfsburg train that like in the next five weeks they are playing Bayern Munich and Union Berlin and, and uh, Leipzig this weekend they are playing against Bayern Munich. Uh, not that they've been that great. Um, but, but since we're talking about Bayern Munich, um, the, the nice transition to France is that in a couple of weeks, the um, round of 16 of the UCL is Bayern Munich against um, Paris Saint-Germain, my, my almost favorite team. Uh, and, and Paris Saint-Germain <laughs> on the weekend for those who are watching I'm a Marseille fan uh, and Paris Saint-Germain on the weekend uh, had a, a nice opportunity to uh, to take some some nice comfortable lead at the front because Lens, Marseille, Monaco, Rennes none of them won just behind them uh, and Paris was ahead for a long time and then at the 95th minute um, Arsenal won the king um, following Balogun scored an, an amazing goal by the way if you haven't seen the goal I, I like Balogun as a player um, since I was seeing him going up ish at Arsenal, but at the 95th minute, being able to outpace Marquinhos and Sergio Ramos and dribble around Donnarumma and score was was beautiful. Obviously, Alex, I saw your face. I have uh, Marquinhos in my draft <laughs> this week, and it didn't work out well for uh, for a lot of results to see Paris Saint Germain um, conceding at the at the last minute. Wow. Try a Donnarumma Hakimi stack with Hakimi captain. The last time I saw, and I wasn't checking for the last 10 minutes, Hakimi was on like a 70 pre um, captain bonus and whatever, everything else. And, and Donnarumma was really strong AA, like 68. And I saw the score after the game. I was just devastated. And then I saw the minute of the goal and it just pain just intensified. Like 96th minute. I was just like, what are you doing? Um, yeah, we won't talk about my team too much. Obviously, we want to look forward in, in the series and yeah, but... Look, talking about looking forward, if we if we look at PSG, because it's usually an easy stack to go to because of how good the players are. Midweek, they have a fixture and they're going to Montpellier and Montpellier is being pretty terrible for the whole of the season, but they just got Benjamin Lecomte as a goalkeeper uh, who was at um, Espanyol and he had 90 f- 95 over the weekend because he had a, a very good game against Auxerre. It was just Auxerre, but he had a very good game and scored well. But that's the only easy game that PSG has to play this month. Uh, and then they're hosting Toulouse. They're playing Marseille in the French Cup. They're going to Monaco. Then there's PSG, Bayern in Champions League. On that weekend, they're playing Lille, who's been great this season. Then they're playing Marseille again in Marseille. And then you got the other fixture of the UCL. And PSG, since they came back, Post World Cup, they lost to Lens, they lost to Rennes, they struggled to beat Angers, who's the worst team we've seen in ages in France. They drew this weekend against Reims. Uh, so there was a lot of talk about Messi, Neymar, Mbappe just racking up for the World Cup and then what's going to happen after. Uh, and after, it doesn't look great right now. It's it, The way I see it, it's either they're going to be great in Champions League and keep struggling a little bit in, in, the, in the domestic competition. But if they are out of the Champions League, if Bayern managed to kick them out, jump on the PSG player because they will finish the season. Look at the end, last of season last year, they finished with Mbappé scoring three goals every single game and Hakimi racking up five or six every single game. Uh, so I think great. with Paris, it's about what they do in Champions League uh, w- will dictate how good they go in in scores in the weekend. They're pretty poor right now. We had another big heavyweight game in France as well, Marseille versus Monaco, which um, is definitely one that always grabs... Grabs the eye when you're dropping your, you know, you're having a wee perusal over the fixture list for the weekend. Did they, did they live up to expectations, Jeremy? 
Uh, it, it did. Like it started as one of the best game I've seen this season. I think over the first six minutes, there was four or five clear opportunities. Monaco should have been up three zeros within 15 minutes. Um, but Ruben Blanco did a few saves. Gigo, the defender from Marseille, a couple of last minute tackle. And then after that, it, it down down a little bit. If you if you haven't watched Marseille this year or, or, or recently under Hugo Tudor, they're really like a, a road roller. They get the ball and they just bully the teams into their own half. And even teams that usually play good football will end up packing the bus for a bit and then struggle. Monaco didn't do that. So tactically, it was great to see. Um, sc- Score-wise, it's interesting. I was looking at how he ended up. Um, Alex Sanchez finishes with 100 because he scores a goal. He always has good AAs with Marseille because he's basically their only striker. But they are right now trying to sign Vicinia from Braga. So if they do get another striker between now and tomorrow night, Alex Sanchez's role might change. Interestingly enough, on the other side, Maripan ends up with 62, the defender from Monaco. If nice. VAR had done their job properly, Maripan probably finishes with the penalty considered in a red card uh, on a tackle on Kolasinac. So it was, I was watching the game and I was like, he's getting a good score. What happened if the referee comes back to it? But, but he didn't, and, and it is what it is. Uh, New Ball finishes with only 28 points because he makes a mistake um, on the goal. But also that means that he's kind of a candidate to put in your keeper, not too expensive for for next week on the on the drafts. If uh, if anybody's interested, because they are playing um, midweek, Monaco is uh, playing against Auxerre, who's very near bottom of the league, uh, and then and then they're going to Clermont afterwards. So up, ups and down. It was it was a good game to watch. It wasn't that was a lot of mi- missed opportunity. What about you? Missed someone. His name is Jordan Vertu. Did you have a good game? I can't remember that guy. <laughs> <laughs> for, for anyone that doesn't know the inside joke, on the live stream of my, me, Quinny and Harry, I think Quinny just absolutely slaughtered uh, Jeremy's choice in Ver 2 and he scored an own goal at the weekend. But to be fair, Jeremy, he had really strong AA and like he would have put up a good score without that. So, uh, yeah, you got to laugh at yourself sometimes. He's, he's the... Like, he's... The, when he scored the the head the header under his own goal in like a an inswerving free kick, I was like, oh, there we are. But he's under under Tudor is definitely the player that all the balls go to. And because Marseille plays a bit of a, uh, for lack of better analysis, a a like a handball way of playing, going around, going around, he's always that deep playing midfielder who gets the ball in front of him so many times that he get all those short passes just accurate. Um, but yeah, last thing on on Marseille, if you want to get a player that's going to score well, just look no further than Mbemba. He's a centre back who plays attacking midfielder half like every other minute. Uh, he's, he's, he's got they play three centre back and this except the one in the middle, the two, the left, right centre back, they end up always pushing further than the right wing and the left wing. Uh, and without that. a proper right wing right now, without close, and Bemba plays really offensively. He's Unreal. he's been getting good scores for the whole bank. month, so he's sixty three points for Mbemba. <laughs> Yeah, his L15 is, is definitely not low, but uh, but yeah. It's huge. Uh, in, in France, the other game that I wanted to to talk about because I watched it and there's a player that's worth mentioning is Lorient sure. against Rennes. Um, Rennes is doing really well this season. Uh, and um, and we oh, have... Are we all um, the same player? <laughs> I don't know. Sorry, Jeremy, go on. Hamari ha- Traore um, from Rennes. Uh, Lorient been, is being amazing. And after a great start, they were a bit bad and then they came back up. I've seen them live when I was in France last month playing against Marseille and they didn't impress me at all because they got scared about playing against Marseille. Uh, but against Rennes this weekend, which technically is a better team, um, they really played well. On the Rennes side, though, despite losing 2-1, you get a guy like Hamari Traore who scored 99.2, being a defender, losing 2-1, scored 99.2. And, and it all comes from the accurate final third passes. He's got 33 of them. Um, he, he is just a, a bully offensively and playing with Burijo, he finds himself a lot up there. He's never going to be dropped. He's the captain of that team um, and he's either the right back or the right wing back. And I think for the prize that he is, he's a player that between now and the end of the year um, can, can do a lot, of, a lot of good stuff. I saw you guys getting excited about Lorient, Lorient Rennes. What gets you excited? <laughs> it's about Rennes, actually. So I will pat myself on the back and I'm sorry for this, but... 57th out of 92,000 people in the French League graph. The French League expert here, ignore Jeremy, but um, I'm sure it won't continue. Um, 
Bravi and Tate, I was like, what an idiot. I got him for 42 points. And I'm, I'm checking the lineups and he's benched. I'm just like, great. Didn't even, didn't even bother with it. Next thing, 96 points in 45 minutes with one decisive action. The guy must be a monster. I didn't watch it, obviously, but um, I'm looking forward. You can't drop a guy like that. Like his forms, like he, he was, I'm um, looking at so rare because he's a bit like a bench warmer in and out. And then he's gone on form, goal, 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 then got dropped. And then um, he's now coming off the bench and on that again. So surely can't be dropped for this next midweek game. But they've got a decent fixture. I'm, I'm playing exactly the same team, I think. And uh, yeah, like that the guy one, a lot now. The one that might come in as well as Faviente is Santa Maria, who stayed on the bench, who is... Ren's midfielder and Ren when they have Santa Maria and Te, they're a much different team than right now when they're playing like Yongo Kuchoku and, and Desiree Due in the middle of the park who are not 20, neither of them. Um, so yeah, Te, Te is a great player and he's really, um, yeah, like a bit of a bulldog in the middle of the park and technically very, very sound. But good, good one. Uh, your little results in, uh, in French League, I'm impressed. Uh, the only other game I, I would maybe throw anything out, and I know you caught a little bit of Serie A action as well, Alex, but I caught uh, a little bit of Lazio Fiorentina, and I must admit, like, I didn't watch the game through the microscope or anything, but, like, this, uh, Lazio are really taking Sarri ball as seriously as any Napoli team I've ever seen, like Chelsea, Juventus, you know, the last couple of teams that Sarri's been at, they, they, they've not... You know, people, anyone who didn't watch Napoli, Sari, and they discovered Sari when he went to Chelsea or whatever, they don't, they don't, you know, they don't know how good that team really was in terms of the tempo, like the real pace that they play at. And watching that Lazio team, I got a real quick reminder of it. Like the whole team is just like, it's like a whole team of Dyson Maedas if you're a Celtic fan listening to this. <laughs> but they're just everywhere, nipping, running, running about frantically with the ball, without the ball, constantly. And, um, I'm pretty sure they beat Fiorentina at the weekend and the way everything's going in Syria, you know, Lazio and Sari are definitely one of the teams I'd be I'd be watching out for. Um and I say for the, the, the parts of the game that I watched, you know, Lazio are definitely a good to watch on the eye at the moment. Yeah, I think fin- it ended fin- up drawing in the end. But finish yeah. one one. Right? Mobley came off the bench as well. He's returned from injury now as well. Go on, Jeremy. Yeah. What are you saying? Yeah, I was I was saying if he finished one one, I was looking I looked at like the oh, end of the game because I was seeing uh, like I have a a limited Jovic since he left Real Madrid and every weekend I'm like maybe it's his weekend maybe it's his weekend yeah. <laughs> as I, as don't, don't, don't. I just I I got so annoyed with Jovic I literally just binned him off to Pavel like I thought he was a great pick cat mode cat mode to come out and I've just not even had the patience to hold on to him I speak to um, it's either so rare Italy or so rare Serie A really nice guy he's a he's a Florentina fan and yeah he keeps me updated with him and, and eventually I was just like look mate He's, he's going. I just can't put up with this manager. Everyone says the manager's a bit of a fraud. Like, he can't really... You can never predict his lineups, and he has no idea what he's doing, and, and he thinks he's kind of... It's not looking good for for him, essentially. They're looking for replacements and stuff. So I got rid of him, and, and I'm glad to glad to be rid of him. But I did see him start, and I was like, don't, don't you do it. Please, no. Um, but yeah, I, I knew Lazio had drew because I am like a, a Roma fan, not like not in the same vein as I'm a Celtic fan throughout my life. It's like a it's like a new thing where whatever. But um, yeah, they obviously played Napoli. Unlucky to get beat. They put up a really good performance, but Napoli are a serious serious side. Uh, Victor Oshiman, if you haven't seen that goal, it, it was just one of those where you're just like you, like you're wow. the opposite team, and you're just like just clapping away. It, it was special to be honest. Um, um, Lozano, Chucky Lozano, he, he was kind of impressive for me as well. Like a lot of speed. Um, but yeah, I guess not too many other standout players that I, I can't say it. Cap- Cavacilo or whatever, he got he got the assist, which was standard. But I think he had an off, off game by his standards. But nice to have in the draft. In terms of Roma, um, people I thought played really well. Dybala, always strong. He's just he was quite aggressive. Um, we're scared of him getting a red card because of the early booking. Uh, Zalawoski and El Shawari got the, the goal and the assistant and they were very strong. I think Zalawoski is like 20 or something. He's a good up and coming like right wing back or yeah, left wing back as well. So really strong player for the future. Maybe not SO5 now, but yeah, really good performance from both teams, I'd say. In, in Italy, I was looking at Milan. What's going on with them? Like in the conceding nine goals in the last two they obviously there's a co- super copa against inter they lost it they got out of the copa Italia against torino they couldn't beat lecce um the, the week before uh i mean poor tataresano like they, they milan fan they just can't <laughs> wait to see Milan coming back in 
well, I don't think it's just that. I saw um, on Twitter, I saw the lineups and I was just reading through the comments and all of them were just like, this manager's just trying to get sacks now. Like, what's going on? Because I think he left like Liao out, maybe Kalulu, um, some absolutely mad decisions and yeah, cost him obviously dearly. So, yeah. Five uh, yeah, two against Sassuolo if people haven't haven't checked it and uh, and Sassuolo I was thinking about you Queenie Berardi a goal and three yeah. assists didn't even play him that's how good I am didn't even play him <laughs> <laughs> I thought I'd give you all a chance you know <laughs> just pick them but I don't play them you know don't play them Be too... the, the goalkeeper I picked as well seventy six Skorowski so I had a wee bit of, a wee bit of beginner's luck with the Serie A in that sense but um, it was uh, Tio Hernandez. 35% might start, might not start. Did start, but it was god awful. Might as well have been a DNP. <laughs> so, <laughs> so a wee bit of a, a false start for me on that one. But I've just made a little swap actually to my La Liga, just as we're talking there about some of these players. Some of the ones that I thought were really interesting that we've not actually mentioned on the show yet, just as we get towards the tail end of it, is Phil Krug is away this week to mm-hmm. Stuttgart, who have got one of the worst teams, and he's only 57 points on the draft. Uh, and Colin Muani, who we're singing his praises, he's like 65 or something. So, you know, like by comparison, you know, that could be a good option uh, for Bundesliga if anyone's kind of stuck there. There is some good, fi- uh, it's Atletico Madrid versus Barca in La Liga this weekend. So, a bit of a tough fixture there. And looking at Italy, like Napoli have got Spezia. So, if you've got an awesome one already, if you've got some Napoli cards, then it could be good for, for some Serie A um, for, for, for Napoli. If we're talking uh, La Liga, I'm looking forward to Atletico Bilbao being good again. Um, Cadiz next week. I've got like pretty much a stack of them. They've been solid, don't get me wrong. Like Yere, besides the one point on his debut for the club, he put a really good score against... Um, they weren't playing Sociedad, who was it? It's a very good club. Um, but essentially, the boys have put up a really okay. good score until they conceded one goal. So they're there. They just need a slightly easier fix. Yeah, Celta Vigo, who they played. Um, but... I, I'm hoping they can come strong. I hope someone has a little more knowledge about the league can fill me in with what's going on with Munayin. So he's finally back in the starting lineup, but um, I just don't know why he was left out in the cold. And he was on SO5 at least their best player, or most consistent player. So yeah, hopefully they can come strong. Um, anyone else? Any good fixtures? Anyone playing Elche? Villa Villa Real? Um, that was exactly yeah, think looking at this. Yeah. <laughs> well, they're 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 on an. Okay, each form they weren't terrible against Real Madrid in the Copa del Rey when they lost, um, and then yeah, they're about they're kicking off in five minutes against Rayo Vallecano. So if anybody sees them showing a bit of form, check the Villarreal players because they're going to Elche um, at, at the end of the week. That could be a yeah, that could be a good an easy get. I did actually forget one of the games I watched was uh, Valencia. I watched the second half and yeah, wasn't very impressed to be honest. They were getting um, not beat. But yeah, I feel like they were getting out outperformed by Valo Valovedid, I believe it was. Um yeah. and now they're coming up against Madrid. If I had my Real Madrid stack, I would be running that out and I'd be captaining Vinny Jr. or Benzema, who's ever up front, because although they haven't been scoring a lot, um that I it's got a really cool name, the goalkeeper of Valencia. It's like I'm just trying to get the pronunciation right, to be fair. Um let me pull it up. Mamadashvili, that's the one. Sick name, to be fair. But um, yeah, he's been strong. But yeah, Gaia as well is obviously great, SO5 wise. But it, they just don't look good as a team. Like Musa, like, yeah, there's no one you can stand out and say, right, he's going to make the difference. That's why they're towards the bottom of the league. And if Gattuso got sacked, I don't think the Valencia uh, management, would, the uh, players would be too bothered. So yeah, it's my thoughts. Anyone that caught your eyes for the weekend, Queenie, that. Any fixture that are important, anything? I'm just having a quick glance over uh, all the main ones in case I've missed anything. But um, looking at the players that I've got for the draft, a few of them have got pretty decent fixtures, like um, for scoring. I've just had a wee chop around there. Like Sociedad, I've got Valladolid there at home. So that could be a good fixture for them. Uh, I've had to swap out my Dembele because he's injured for a while. And I know that Ferran Torres is going to get his minutes. So Ferran Torres is a forward card on the draft, which is handy as well. So... Um, you know, I've just done that, but I don't know if I'll stick with it or not. And I'm now thinking, I'm not sure if I, how restricted I am on how many times I can swap players and stuff. Uh, so I better watch out. I don't uh, maybe use, I think I have used all my shots. Damn it. Yeah, I think you only get two <laughs> swaps. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We got, now that we got the real league, uh, Alex, who do you have in your draft for the for the midweek? 
Uh, the same team. Ooh. If we're talking talking about France, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Just you know, if it works, run it out again. I will say concerns now for Tagliafico because he was on like negative decisives, then he got an assist. But they're playing yeah. Brest. Um, are they? Start uh, Brest. Oh, they've smart. just changed coach and they've won four zero against the worst team this weekend. So Lyon is not a team that I trust. So I put Tagliafico only against really bad teams against Brest. I don't know. They are bad right now, but they've just changed coach. Yeah, I got I got two Monaco players in mind, Nubel and Beignet there. I kept Marquinhos and Mbappé because they're playing against Montpellier. And I yeah, started no. Lovro, Lovro Meyer from, from Rennes. So I went for like players that I know are strong and hopefully they, they do perform. Um, if we're talking La Liga, uh, it came up in the in this live stream, but o- Oya Reizabal from Real Sociedad looks like he's back. So if they, they played Real Madrid this week, which isn't great, but leading in to play in Real Vol- Valadid, or I'm not sure on the pronunciation, but that should be a strong pick. Um, cheap, about 42 points, 41, not sure. That's all for me, really. Yeah. Well, the one of the trades I did that took off my other swap is I swapped out Jesus Navas, who's playing. Uh, Seville have not got a good game. But I just oh, looked sorry, at right. it. Yeah, and I swapped him out for uh, Jan Kuto, who's the little right back. I've got his super rare for Girona, but it sounds like Arno Martinez, who's been playing right back, is going to get transferred to somewhere. Maybe Atletico, or maybe even Man City, have been linked to him today as well. But Kuto has been playing right wing sometimes. But even with that happening now, I know he's going to get minutes. I actually think he's probably good to start in Girona at home to Valencia and for an attacking right wing back kind of guy then maybe that's a good game for him for stuck sure. with it now whether I like it or not <laughs> guys it's been an absolute pleasure and we'll be back for more next week don't forget to like subscribe and share and retweet and check out the links in the description for everyone uh, if you've watched the end, comment looking down on Laird because this is going to be the new best uh, new best series on the channel. So we'll know the hardcore stay to the end. Love it. Take care.